Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Prodigal Son. A great season finale. Holy shit, a lot of stuff went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, I love that uh, beginning where it's just kind of Malcolm being like, I'm not like you, Dad. I'm not a killer like you. And his dad's laughing. He's like, oh, no. I was, you know, no. He's like, no, you go on, you go on. I'm sure you've been wanting to say this for years. He was like, I'm just going to say it's funny that we're matching jumpsuits and everything and his dad's pushing and prodding and I love that the whole thing ended up just being inside his head he's inside of a cell because I guess he he was kind of like having a night well he's having a, like a night terror and he's just like I'm and he's pointing at the dude he's like dude I don't like why are you pointing at me and stuff like why are you yelling at me? he's like sorry I was having a nightmare and he's like yeah dude we're in prison this is a nightmare and obviously he posts bail JT and Danny are the first ones there he's like yeah we know you didn't do this but the fact of the matter is you gotta let us handle it and then I love um, Jessica being like don't talk to them they're the, you know because she has to kind of treat them like the enemy but it's like she got a whole bunch of lord luckily coming from the family he does he has the the means of kind of you know uh, taking care of this situation so obviously you know it is a situation of Malcolm's trying like he has to wear a, uh, a ankle monitoring bracelet and everything so uh, he's telling his mom, she's like, what are you about to do? He's like, yeah, I'm about to leave. She's like, no, you're going to do, what you're going to do is stay here. And he's like, nah, he's like, I can fix it. You know, I know how to just make it so that like, I, I make it seem like I'm still here when I'm not. And obviously for Jessica, it's like, oh, this is just going to make things worse. You getting involved in stuff like that. Uh, Gil shows up. Gil more so than anything is more so there to check on Jessica because he knows Malcolm's going to be fine, but he wants to make sure Jessica's fine throughout all of this. And, you know, especially because, you know, for Jessica, it's like everything's going on all at once. It's like you find out about um, Nicholas. Then there's also the whole situation between you and Gil. Now your son's being framed for murder. And it's just kind of like it's a little too much happening all at once. And I love the fact is, you know, uh, you know, Gil's just kind of like, just keep him here. You trust me, right? She's like, I do. And so I was like, Malcolm, you can come out. And it, um, Leonard walks out. It's like, actually, uh, Malcolm just left. And it's like, how did he? And it, he put that ankle bracelet on him. And he's like, also, he said I could sleep. He said it would be cool if I slept in his room. And she's like, no, Leonard, it wouldn't be cool. Not at all, Leonard. Um, so at the same time, there's a whole thing with like uh, Martin waking up and it's like the place is empty. I was like, wait, why is no one watching him? His doors wide open. I was like, oh my God. I was like, is this going to be a moment where he just gets to walk free or something? That's what I was wondering. But lo and behold, that's not the case. Nicholas set it up so that it looked like he tried to make a prison escape. Uh, and that ends up being because at first he's like the fact of the matter is I told him some tidbits here and there but none of the like juicy details that right there should have been like the real like ins and outs of it like that should have kind of that was foreshadowing what was to come later on but we'll get it to it soon enough but he's like basically I can expose you for everything that you've done because obviously for Nicholas I guess it's like yeah there was no ins and outs to everything that he's done but the fact is that there's whispers amongst his family that know the truth about him now police some of the police know about what he really is and stuff like that so obviously he doesn't want to you know that to get exposed so obviously he's got to clear the board so uh martin gets put into a uh, public uh in a public uh gin population is what i'm trying to think of jeez i couldn't think of the word i love who does he run into because i saw the name in the intro i was like jamie hector as in the same jamie hector that's been playing uh jerry edgar on Bosch. he's been in other things but that's like the most recent thing of his that i'm more familiar with and i'm like that's so interesting because it's like obviously you know in Bosch he plays a cop so to see him kind of like kind of on the opposite side of that in this is just kind of interesting but he's actually walking up he's like oh like doc you see all these people here like you know the fact that matters he's like uh my normal advice to people like in your situation would be find people like you and then the doc was and then uh, uh i was calling call the doc um martin's kind of like yeah but uh to be fair like you know the aryan brotherhood doesn't align with where i kind of stand plus you know the whole circumcised penis thing too probably won't help um, but Hector's like, yeah, the fact, I mean, I'm calling him Hector by his last name, geez. But the dude's like, the fact of the matter is, like, you see all these faces, because there's a bounty on his head, and he's like, but if they come after you, a whole bunch of people are going to be gunning, trying to kill you, so it's going to turn into chaos, and he's like, I don't want chaos, people here respect me, so I keep order here, so he's like, it's like, oh, so Martin's like, okay, I just need to get a phone call. He's like, no, no, I'm not going to help you, Doc. I'm just letting you know, let, under, trying to get you to understand why I'm going to have to kill you. And that's the crazy thing about it. We see for the first time in forever, 
We see it periodically, but not like this. Martin Whitley scared. It's like, you're the surgeon. You're this big-time serial killer. and You're always so calm, cool, and collected. And to see you nervous like this is something else entirely. Um, I love that, obviously, like, you know, the team is, like, looking at examining Eddie's body. Adris is doing the examination and stuff like that. She's saying, like, it, there's no way it could be Malcolm because the way the kill went down, it's like he was suffocating. It's like there's no way this could have been um, – She's like, the fact of the matter is, Malcolm, would, where's the pizzazz if this was Malcolm? But obviously, out of anyone, Danny's the one that kind of lays it down. She actually kind of talks a little like Malcolm. She's like, if he fits the profile because this had to be someone up close and personal. This had to be, like, you know, Malcolm fit, fits what the killer would have been in this situation, so... But obviously, Adresa, uh, you know, it's like she's upset because obviously all the evidence is pointing to Malcolm. But she's like, I know he didn't do it. But then she's like, how much of that did you hear? Because Malcolm's there. And he's like, most of it. And she's like, I love that line of her being like, I was, I was, you know, I was, you know, about ready to start a meaningful female friendship with Danny. Maybe, you know. And so she's like, he's like, well, the profile's right. He's like, wait, you don't think that you actually did it, right? And he's like, no, I didn't. But obviously, like. Danny's profile of the person who killed him but that's the thing though because they end up eventually finding out because like but how did they get his DNA underneath it's like it didn't make any sense because um, obviously Adresa's like yeah I know I trust everyone on my team she's like plus everyone on my team is like what was it like good at karaoke and stuff like that but I thought what's also neat was the whole situation of like them figuring out that it had to be um, the company who um who had examined the bot, like, who had, who gathered all the evidence, it had to be them first, before, it, like, so the ed evidence was already tampered with before it got to Adresa and stuff like that, so he's like, I'm gonna have to go look into it, because he found out, and it was, like, a company that Nicholas owned, owned that company and everything, so, but uh, before he left, Adresa, like, hosts him, she's like, please don't die, and he's like, I'm not gonna die, I'm gonna be okay, I promise, and I love it, she, he's walking away, she's looking, she's like, was, I think, what was it, she said exactly, was like, was he waiting for me to kiss him? You know, and she's just kind of wondering if she should. I was like, ah! I was like, that's why you're the most adorable human being in existence, Adresa. I adore you so much. That's so cool. Um, he goes to see Sterling, uh, the you know, the corrupt lawyer, and kind of goes like, okay, so the fact is that company is owned by Nicholas and everything. And it's like, his lawyer, uh, Sterling's back there, like, destroying stuff. And so... Uh, it's interesting too because like Malcolm brings up something he was like do you know why they call my mom calls you the devil is because the moment Nicholas convinced you to represent my dad it was kind of basically a spiral since then it's just like him helping celebrities and bad people over like it, it was more about the limelight and position so it's like he kind of got corrupted but it's like you used to represent and stand for so much more Sterling like help me take down Nicholas but obviously for Nicholas it's like understanding everything like why Eve died it's like Eve died because he probably got scared because she she probably he thought like oh she must know what Sophie knows you know so now it turns into a situation of the only way you're going to survive this Malcolm is if you get the evidence that your dad got from Sophie like because obviously Eve didn't have the evidence from Sophie so it's like the only thing is your dad must know what's going down so we're going to need him you're going to need that information to uh get yourself out of this but then an assassin shows up and kills sterling uh i was like oh this isn't going to be good because your dna is going to be all over him because you're you're holding the, the gunshot wound his blood's on you i was like oh this isn't going to be good luckily malcolm gets back to his house um ainsley's there it's like no 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 the blood's not mine wait cover for me um and everything so and i love uh, gill and the others walking in he's like oh detectives hey what's this you're like did you leave he was like no I mean, have you been reading this magazine the entire time? And he's like, where else would I be? And Ainsley's like, yeah, like all the trees that get cut down from like the long list of like uh, magazines and stuff my mom gets sent. So I just kind of like, oh, and Danny's like, look at me and tell me that you haven't been anywhere. He's like, I promise you, Danny, I've been anywhere. And they're like, all right, let's go. And he's like, no, let me help in the case. They're like, we can't. And then Malcolm immediately goes, okay, I lied to you. I actually was there. Sterling, when I was there when he got shot, they're like, wait, what? And then Ju Jessica and Ainsley are like, oh, why are you doing this, Malcolm? And even I was like, I don't understand why you're doing it. And then Ainsley explains, like, because they're going to have to take him, it's right. So they're going to have no choice but to book him because he admitted to being at a crime scene and stuff like that. And he's already a suspect and everything. So 
Uh, but I love that, um, like, during the whole situation, because obviously, like, he kind of snaps a little at Danny because he's like, I want you to believe me. And JT is like, do you two, like, need a minute or something? And then obviously, and Malcolm's getting in a rush of things, so he's standing up and he's like, wait, sorry, uh, can I stand up? You know, suspects normally don't stand up. And Gil's like, you can stand up. He's like, great. And so he's trying to break it down, trying to understand, like, you know, how could this have happened? Because the fact of the matter is... Like, the time, like, needed to make that happen of, like, killing, like, it'd have to be, like, the doctors and stuff like that, like, it would have to be one of them, well, there were so many doctors and stuff going in and out, so who would have really had a chance to kill him, but then, like, Malcolm starts thinking, what if Eddie was already dead by the time he went there, but it's like, you being the profiler you are, you wouldn't have noticed, but for him, it's like, Malcolm didn't get close enough because we finally find out what happened. Malcolm got scared away because when he saw Eddie, despite how he felt about it, in that moment, seeing what his father did to Eddie, it made him go like, I, I'm not my father, you know? And, you know, Danny was like, yeah, we know you're not, you know? So, you know, so now it's a situation of, but if they're working on the premise that Eddie was already dead before Malcolm got there, then it, it, it turns into a situation of them having a long list of suspects. So they're going to have to meet up with his. He's going to have to meet up with his dad. And once again, that situation of his dad being scared. And it was so interesting because he sits down. He's like, I miss my old cell. I miss uh, Mr. David. I don't like this place. And it's just like you, like I said, you never see him so off kilter. Like I said, because he's usually so calm, cool, collected in control. And it's so nice to see him off kilter like that. So it kind of finally dings in Malcolm's head of like, because, like, okay, what's the evidence where that Sophie gave you? He's like, I can't give it to you. In that moment, it's like Malcolm's like, because Sophie never had any evidence. You never had any evidence. You've been bluffing Nif Nicholas the past 20 years. That's a long con. Uh, I mean, it, it kept him and his family, at his him and his family safe. So he did, in fact, li uh, leave Sophie. But after she kind of set up the whole him and Nicholas meeting thing, the fact is that um, giving him uh, Nicholas's number and stuff like that, he hasn't been in contact with her. So he doesn't even know if she's alive or, or well or whatnot. So it's like, oh, did Nicholas eventually catch up to her at some point in time? It seems like he didn't. But whatever the case may be, it's like. Now Malcolm's screwed because it's like there is literally no evidence in existence that could like clear his name and take Nicholas down. But his dad says there is another way to end up this nightmare. It is you're going to have to kill him, which obviously it's like, you know, Malcolm's like, I'm not, you know, he's like, obviously this is this is a nightmare come true because for him, it's like now this will mean he'd be coming his father being a killer. But obviously that's not what he wants to do. That's not who he is. And obviously, Martin's kind of like basically shitting himself, but then like Ainsley is like, you're the surgeon, you're the smartest person in here and stuff like that. And in that moment, Martin looks down and sees her hand touching his. And she's, um, I think she's almost surprised by the fact that she got all touchy with her dad like that. So all the while that's happening, you know, Malcolm, you know, returns and Gil's telling him, he's like, yeah, you got to bounce. Because the fact is, the orders are coming down like that. We're going to have to arrest you for this like tomorrow. So take whatever money you can and leave. And obviously, you know, he asked Gil to look after his mom. It's like she's going to try and sit down with um, sit down with Nicholas. And the fact is, you know, obviously her plan is to record him or something, which both Ainsley and uh, um, Malcolm were both saying that's a terrible idea. Uh, but... Um, as uh, Malcolm was about to leave, he starts hearing stuff like he plays Eve's recording like her message one more time. And he hears all this stu stuff in the background. He's like, those are dogs and a bird. He was trying to figure out what that was. So he got Danny to backtrack. And I was like, where is this going to take him? I was like, she was with her sister. And it turns out like he ends up meeting with her. And I love that moment where he's like, she's like, so what was your name again? He was like. Because he was like, you got your degree. She's like, kind of need that to be a vet and everything. I think for him, it's happy to know, like, oh, she lived a life where despite everything, she was able to kind of live enough of a life to get a degree and everything so that she led a good enough life that it's like, oh, you were able to kind of, you know, accomplish some, you know, things with your life. And she's like, but who, what was your name again? He's like, Malcolm. I was like, you want to say the W name, aren't you? And you're, it's not going to be bright. And he's like, Malcolm Whitley. And in that moment, they recognize and I. I, at that moment, didn't take in how impactful that moment was at first. It took a second for me to, the moment he was like, 
you're the girl from the box. And she's like, you're the boyfriend of basement. I was like, of course this is going to be such an impactful moment. This is your first time. This is the first time Malcolm's laid eyes on her in the past 20 years. And even he talks about it because for him, it's like she was something that's always stuck with him ever since he was little because he always wondered, was she alive? Was she well? What kind of life she would be living if she was alive? And now to see her, it's just kind of like to know that she's okay. And obviously, it's a situation... Sadly, where, you know, she's like, you know, you're, you, you were probably wondering. She's like, because it turns out like she's the one that killed Eddie because it pieced together in Malcolm's head. Like the only the person who would have had just as much motive to kill Eddie would have to be someone that loved Eve. So it had to be none other than her. Um, so it turned into a situation of. um Because I, I skipped over it, but I did like the fact that they're like, OK, so. Uh, what's your idea about all this? Because they laid out like how he died and everything. And at the end of the day, uh, Martin was like, I don't know. They're like, look over there and they're looking like, what the hell you mean? You don't know. You're usually on the ball with this whole situation. You're actually the one that kind of helps lead Malcolm into solving things. And it is moment, such a crucial moment with your son's life and every, your entire family's life and it, everything is on the line. You're like, I don't know. Like, Wrong time to be off your game, uh, Martin. Uh, but the fact, circling back to what I was saying before, she's like, I get it. Like, you probably think, like, I got, you know, I'm so messed up and damaged from the whole Martin situation. And at the end of the day, Malcolm's like, I'm sorry for what my dad did to you. And then I think in that moment, she's looking like, wait, what? Like, that, that he would take time to even say that. She's like, you were a kid, like, you couldn't have, because he's like, I'm sorry, I couldn't save you. And she's like, but you were a kid, like, but for Malcolm, that's his biggest, like, guilt, because he felt like whatever her fate was, it was on him. And, and you know, it's like, even, like, her in hiding and all this, it's like, if I'd gotten to you sooner, like, maybe things could have been different. And the fact of the matter is, things played out the way they did, and it's like, now he's being, you know, framed for Eve's murder, and he's like, the only way he's going to be able to get free is if he... Uh, turns into real killer and he's like it's a shame I didn't find her find the real killer and she uh, Sophie looks at him and he's like yeah you know despite all my hard work and all the clues they led me here and there was nothing he's like some cases just don't get solved and I'm like because she's already lost so much she's lost her sister and he understands why like the fact of the matter is this is the man that killed her sister because she even said it she had four days with Eve they were not reunited after all this time Four days is all she got and her sister was taken from her just like that. It's like, that is the shittiest thing ever. That sucks so much. And so Malcolm ends up, you know, leaving. At the same time, Jessica's having dinner with um, uh, Nicholas. And it's so interesting, like Nicholas being like, oh yeah, like I've kind of, he even admits like, oh, I kind of put stuff underway to make it so that Martin kind of gets like it's like oh he will last maybe a day or another day or two i'm like you're openly admitting that you kind of forced that situation interestingly enough and it's interesting because it's like oh i'm gonna come in i'm gonna come in and save your son and stuff like that because in a twisted way he loves um jessica but at the same time it's like well can you even call it love because for him he's like oh you, you have all this money and stuff like that but what you really need is influence and power and so it's like oh this is a powerful woman that i think maybe in his mind it's like if i conquer you like you know, or maybe, maybe like, I think he has his delusional sense of what love is because for someone who just cares about power and influence, like people would seem like they're nothing more than things that you squash underneath your boot. Like, that's why I feel like he, his, him saying that he loves that. But like I said, in his twisted mind, Hey, I, you know, I, I do love you, Jessica. I'll do anything for you, Jessica. It's like, it's kind of even twisted. Obviously, the whole thing with Gil was crazy because they're having a face-off. I expected Gil to hit him, and then that turns into a problem later on with Gil getting suspended or something. Never would I have seen that he got got his dude to stab Gil. I'm like, are you out your goddamn mind? You stabbed a detective. And then immediately, showing you the psychopath that he is, he literally goes back to dinner with Jessica like nothing happened. And she, luckily, she smashed a plate over his head, crashed the car into that other car, and got Gil out of there. So... So much going down in all of this. And so, you know, Malcolm being there for Danny because she he's like seeing like her hand shaking, like obviously like a little bit of him rubbing off on her. So he grabs her hand to kind of keep her calm. And she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't believe you. He's like, the fact of the matter is he's like, he's used to not believing in himself. So, but obviously, because he's like, Gil's going to be okay because obviously things don't look good. But obviously because of this, they're going to uh, bring up charges against, you know, um, him, I mean, hell, 
um, Jessica witnessed it. So she's like, I'll testify. But he gets a text up from Ainsley saying, get home now. Gets there. Lo and behold, who's there? None other than Nicholas. At the same time, this is all going down. Uh, home dude, you know, Jamie Hector's character ends up attacking Martin. And in that instant, like Martin's like, no, no, no. The fact is that scratching, it's a neurological thing, meaning that you might have a lump, like you might have like a tumor or something that's on, 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 like on your brain or something like that. And he's like, the fact of the matter is I'm a, you know, doctor. I've consulted with so many like neurosurgeons, like the best around the world and stuff like that. So me basically helping prolong your life probably worth more than the bounty that's on my head so and in that moment his he was like they're walking he's like yo telling other people to back away but obviously it, it even though he wanted to stop chaos because this was his whole point by him letting malcolm live chaos ensues and in that moment martin's like okay i'm like wait was this all according to your plan i was like i was i figured i was like was it just simply this but it's like no you knew keeping him making him keep you alive long enough would throw the prison in chaos because you knew that he was like yeah like if a whole bunch of people gunning for you would throw the prison into chaos so he wanted to take advantage of it. and immediately my brain was like oh so is this what's going to happen where we're going to have set up potentially for a second season where it's like you're actually free you ended up bouncing you ended up kind of escaping through the chaos could have easily still happened probably not but that's what i was wondering about if that was okay i mean once again we don't even like we don't know what happened to jamie hector's character like whether or not he's actually still alive or something you know which would be interesting if i mean i'm assuming that he is because that'll probably make it so that he ends up being uh potentially martin's only friend in prison but uh nevertheless we have the confrontation between nicholas and you know, uh, Malcolm, and in the middle, Ainsley's there, and so it turns into this whole thing of him, you know, because Malcolm's like, okay, you can celebrate, you know, be celebratory and stuff like that, but the fact of the matter is, the police are raiding your places, we're gonna take you down, he's like, oh yeah, you can try and take me down, it's like, you stabbed Gil, it's like, no, I didn't stab Gil, home, did, home dude stabbed Gil, the fact is, he was so distraught, you know, distraught about what he did and everything, he killed himself a couple hours ago, and it's like, you can't just keep killing people to get away with with all of this and he was like I'm going to and obviously Malcolm it starts shaking because it just it started you know getting to him and he pulls out a gun and points it at um Nicholas he's like the fact is you killed Eve and you might have killed Gil like you're gonna have to you it's for Malcolm in his head is like this is the only way to stop a guy like this he's too powerful he's too influential like nothing's gonna stick like pulling a bullet in him might be the only way to stop all of this but then in that moment, you see this look on Ainsley's face. I was like, wait, what was that? Because I know, I think the, the title of this episode is like, Father, the moment we saw that look on Ainsley's face, I'm like, not father like son, father like daughter. But then, and then even he, Nicholas is like, oh, you take after your, your mom. Like you don't have like, kind of almost like you're all bark and no bite. And it's like, he's like, we will find a way to stop you. And he's like, oh, you're not going to. Ainsley comes up behind him, slits his throat. I was like, whoa. And then she's just looking at him. I was like, holy shit. And then she starts stabbing him repeatedly. You're like, whoa. That escalated quickly. Um, holy crap. And just the look on her face, almost like she was detached from it. So I was like, holy crap. Like we've been, because to me that turned everything upside down. Because I was almost like, comparisons in my head I've made before was a little bit like, um, Hannibal, uh, the NBC show, is kind of where I was kind of thinking I made comparisons to, like, you know, this show, too. And so, I assumed that things were going to end with Malcolm crossing a line and becoming, like, his dad. Like, he fought so hard to be not be his dad, I thought that's how things were going to be. But it's like, it turns out, the one person, and, and it almost, it's interesting, too, because what has Ainsley done the entire season? Try to get to know her dad, and get to know him, and build a relationship with him. So, it's almost, it seems almost like poetic in a twist you know a uh, messed up form of poetry that she would end up being a killer and it's like he's like what did you do and then she kind of snaps out of it she's like what happened i was like i was like did he did your dad brain like not brainwash you did he hypnotize you in that moment you touched him and he looked down at you I, as he was walking away i was almost like it almost and it was kind of slowing down and almost like he was smiling like oh this is all going according to plan like did he set that up and then you know he calls malcolm and it's like, oh, I'm kind of okay. It's like, what's well, good? He's like, things aren't good here. He's like, what happened? It's, you know, Ainsley did what you, she took your advice. And he was like, my girl. And I'm like, 
So is that the fact is because to be fair, Ainsley probably she seems more well adjusted, but probably on the inside of her head, she's probably just as jacked up as, you know, um, Malcolm is. So maybe in that instant, it triggered something where Malcolm couldn't go bring himself to go all the way because he takes more after their mom and maybe Ainsley takes a little more after their dad. So or like I said, like the fact is, it seemed like she was in a trance. So either she just had a break in that instant of like. If he can't do it, I'll have to do it. Or did Martin do He's smart enough to do something, but kind of maybe every time he's met with Ainsley, he's some, done something little by little to kind of trigger it. Or maybe that entire time they were talking, he was triggering something. I don't know. Because, you know, so that's what I'm curious about. Was that 100% Ainsley? Was that uh, Martin? Like, what that whole thing is. So, uh, very very good spot to end the season of like where the hell will this potentially you know go at the time we're recording this it hasn't been announced whether or not fox is renewing this for a second season i hope the hell they do especially with this finale uh for some of the stuff i was reading is like because of you know current state of the world and everything that might you know obviously influence uh, you know, any announcements and stuff like that. But I really hope we get a second season because it's going to be a situation of obviously more, uh, Malcolm is going to do whatever he can to protect his family. Hell, like, you know, Jessica took the fall when it was uh, Malcolm stabbing Martin. So probably it's going to be like, okay, we're going to clean up this whole place and we're going to dispose of Nicholas's body, make it seem like he ran. So now Malcolm's got this secret that he's keeping from JT, Danny, and I mean, Gil might be out of commission for a while. So maybe someone's going to be taking over uh, stuff for a while. Uh, obviously, like where things kind of stand with him and Jessica. Are they even going to tell their mom the truth? Probably not. But it's, they're probably going to make it look like he ran away because Martin's probably going to be like, okay, here's what we're going to do, kids, to clean up the stuff like that. Him being the surgeon and everything, he, him being the man with the plan and everything. I think that's the direction this is going to go. So the entire season is going to be them looking for um, Nicholas, but not knowing he's dead. I mean, that might be this being her first kill and everything. This might haunt Ainsley and it might be, you know, the beginning of the like, you know, treading her down the path of the surgeon. Not necessarily, but, you know, that awakening, that darkness in her. I mean, granted, like I said, that darkness could have been there the entire time and maybe just in that instant you know, Malcolm not pulling the trigger, hearing her dad saying that this is a way to protect their family, or maybe Martin did something. Like I said, I just don't know. It sparked that darkness in her, and it made her do that. And like I said, she just slit his throat. She slit his throat and stabbed him multiple times. She went crazy in that moment. So it's like, that is a lot to kind of... And obviously, things aren't well for Malcolm either, because... The evidence still suggests that he's the one that killed Eddie, not unless Sophie decides to like, oh, I'm going to help you out, you know, with everything, which I don't know if she'd do that. Like, it's it's going to, if, if this comes back for a second season, it's going to be a complicated situation that they're going to have to deal with over, over the course of the season. Like I said, also, like, is Martin going to go back to his comfy room and stuff like that? Or is he going to say in general, pop? And is Jamie Hector's character going to be like, oh, his ally, and that's going to be kind of his friend. Like, uh, he no longer has Mr. David, so he's in this situation, found a new friend, or what? Because like I said, there was also part of me that halfway expecting him to kind of escape prison and kind of be free in some shape or form. I mean, that story like could go down that direction, but getting out of there, even with the riot going on, probably wouldn't be the easiest thing. I mean, he could eventually do it, but... Eventually, I'm sure the bounty is potentially going to disappear, especially if Nicholas isn't there to kind of keep things flowing. But uh, like I said, I hope the show gets a second season. This is a really, really good show. Uh, in, uh, good show. It's really interesting. And I, I, like I said, I'd be so curious where this all could potentially take us going forward into a second season. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.